students in the community of Oxnard to have an opportunity to listen to, to meet the talented Latino artists that are making a difference in Hollywood today. And this series has been, so far, a fantastic success. Some of you I know have been here, some of you probably just heard the rumors about the people who showed up when we had, for example, Edward James Olmos on the stage. So we're continuing what we started last year, building on it, making it better. And probably the biggest part of all of this is the person that we brought from Hollywood to be our creative director. A man who has incredible talent, many credits, has worked on major productions, started as a writer for In Living Color, wrote for Mad TV, has written movies, and just this year won an award for his new book, Almost White, was given the most inspirational award for the Latino Book Association. So we've been really lucky to have someone of his talent, his intelligence, to come share this with us and help us start building this program that in only one year has already been a huge success. So as always, it is my opportunity, my pleasure, my honor to introduce to you our host this evening and my good friend, Mr. Rick Mahana. Good evening, Oxnard. Good evening. Good evening. What, I, it's, what I love about being in Oxnard is uh, it's a community, and it's a family. And Oxnard College is doing so much to bring that family and community together, and it's a Latino family. Uh, nearly 70% of Oxnard is actually Latino, which is great. So I need to step back a little bit here. <laughs> I want to echo that out to you. It sounds even more threatening to anyone. Like a tea party would hear that and be scared right now. 70% Latino. Like, oh my God, the colonization of America. <laughs> What's good about it is uh, the Latino thought makers is important for two reasons. One, it's about Latinos. And two, they need to understand, and everyone needs to understand, that we are the ones that are really defining the future of America. And that future is inclusive, it's great, and it's going to be educated. And places like Oxnard College make that happen. And these thought makers that we're bringing out, such as Edward James Olmos and everyone else, are really the future. And they're talking about their journey and who they are. And this show, especially, is the number one show on Hulu. It's one of the top rated shows on Hulu. Uh, I can easily say the number one Latino show on Hulu because it's Latino written, directed, and produced. And from day one, it deals with Latino issues and problems. And it's a very smart show, and it's on the web. And one thing about the web is I recently worked for a man named Ray Williams Johnson. I was writing and directing on that show. He has 12 million subscribers, 2 billion views, and basically what he has is a very small set. So what that is is now the democratization of America and most importantly, the democratization of the web because now someone with a little camera to get trained at Oxnard College and actually start a little show, put it on the internet and reach millions of people. They don't have to be CBS, they don't have to be ABC or, ABC or Fox, they can be themselves. So that's what's so important about this show. So uh, let me show you a little clip from the show you're about to see. Welcome to the East Coast High Bomb Squad Tryouts. Becoming a bombshell is a commitment. We practice every day and every practice is mandatory. Five and six. Seven. What the hell, Sassy? Shh. You're pregnant. You can forget about touring with me after graduation. You'll be stuck here all alone. I won't be alone. Hey, where are you going? You haven't changed your life at all. Well, sure. I'm not pregnant. We're here to find the five best dancers to our house. Sassy, I'll have more time for the baby. I know what you're trying to do. You're jealous of me, so you're trying to destroy my self-esteem and you take away everything I want. <laughs> what, like Abraham? No, like Jacob. You knew I liked him and you went after him anyways. Hey, Miko, I want you to meet a new bus boy. I, uh, I think you two are ready, man. Jacob, I gotta leave LA. Look me in the eye and tell me that you don't love me. I don't love you. So what, you and Sis are not together anymore or what? Yeah, when I want to be, where's she gonna go? She's having my kid. Now you know I'm gonna want her after that. Why I love you, and I need to be with you. Sis! Hey! Hey! Are you ready? Yeah, we sure are. Ready for that?
big hand for the creator, executive producer, writer, director, all around great guy, Mr. Carlos Portugal. Good. Grab a seat, grab a seat. Now this is basically the front room for Oxnard. So we're, we're a family here, so feel free to say whatever you want. I mean, this is a, the oh, I will. Good, I know. <laughs> I know you will. We'll have to worry about that. So um, how did the show come about? Um, well, the show started with um, an organization, a non-profit organization called Population Media Center. And what they do with Population Media Center, they go around the world and they figure uh, what are the big issues facing women. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in Africa to this day, um, slavery is still legal. So you can have a 12-year-old girl being sold into slavery by her father. She gets bought by a 45-year-old man who takes her home, rapes her, and then um, throws her to the street, and then the family won't take her back. And now she's a prostitute at 13 years old. This is the stuff that's going on in our world right now. So what, what this company does is they go to these countries and then they create shows that, first of all, are entertainment, so they make them like, uh, you guys know telenovelas, right? Telenovelas? Yeah. I mean, but pretty much <laughs> everyone knows here. <laughs> Alone. And, they, and then they interject social message, messages into the stories. So they will create a show about a young girl who was sold into slavery by her father. I think I lost my mic. Can you guys hear me? No, we got you. Yeah, okay. And then um, they, um, they create a show that's, that is a, that's a very melodramatic show, but that also deals with how many girl in this situation get out of it. So it's what they call entertainment slash educational yeah. program. So they've been doing this type of show uh, around the world, and then they came, they decided to do their first show in the United States. Mm -hmm. And they came to, they, um, uh, Rick, you and I were talking earlier about a survey that had came out that year in 2009, about how 53% of Latinas under 20 were either pregnant or with a baby. So they decided that they wanted... 53%, this is at that time, or before they were 20, were either pregnant or having a baby. In 2009, a new survey just came out that is now um, 39%. That's a huge difference, right? 11% in the last four or five years. Uh, but, um, so they wanted to create a show that dealt with that. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was working on a show at the time, but I just fell in love with the, with the, with the idea. I mean, what, what a dream, right, to, be, um, to, be a, a, to, to create a show where you're really talking to the public that I've always wanted to talk to, you know, because this, this is my hope. These are stories about my sisters, my aunt, my family. And um, so that's how I got involved. Yeah, I, I noticed when I was watching, watching the shows is, first of all, writing's great, really good writing. And it's, it's great that it has a social message yeah, it's not hitting you over the head. Yeah. And it also has a telenovela feel because there, it's a cliffhanger feel to your show, which I happen to really like. And, and that is part of the, the episodic quality of it, but it's so well weaved into the show that you, you that people are binge watching, aren't you in the show? Yeah, people love, people start watching and they can stop. It's, 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 we create them to be very addicting. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I do want to say that I'm so proud of, and I always have to say this, is that every writer that I hire for the show is, a, is Latino. So, so the whole writing staff is a Latino writing staff. And I'm so proud of that. Because it's not that we're creating stories based on what we saw on Dexter or yeah. House of Cards. We're telling our own stories. What's great about that is, is there was a recent survey that came out, USC did a study, and they found out that of the 100 biggest films just, just last year, less than 5% had Latinos in it, in the films. And on the women, 38% were either nude or partially clothed, which means we are underrepresented and underclothed in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, if you look at you saw the Emmys with, with Sofia Vergara. Yes. And that moment, the guy comes out, he's like, hey, we're, we're, the Emmys have done so, we're doing so well. And you think, okay, but there's only one Latino on the Emmys, and they put her on a pedestal, they had a twirl around. So it, it is a unique thing, but what you're doing, having Latinos in front, behind the camera, is really admirable. Well, you know, somebody's got to do it, and ain't going to be the white people. Why Hulu? Huh? Why Hulu? Uh, well, the, the, the interesting thing about the show is that when we did the first season, 
we did it all through um, uh, private funding. So it was a lot of, um, we got the funding through, through people who believed in the story, who, who read the scripts, who fell in love with the story. So the first season we did it outside, we, we did it ourselves. We went and we wrote it, we produced it, we directed it, we edited it, we did the whole thing without a network involvement. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had some offers, because when the script started coming out, people started really liking the scripts, and we had a couple of networks who wanted to get, who wanted to be part of it. But you know, the minute they, got, they, they started talking to us, they already had all these ideas, like, can there be any white people in the show? I'm like, no, it's East LA. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you, 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 have to, you have to fight for these things, you know? And so we decided, and, and, and my, my, my partner, the, the executive producer, her name is Katie Elmore, and I just adore her because she's just like me, you know, we're, we're, we're really professional people, hardworking, but we, we're also fighters, and when we believe in something, we will fight for it. And we decided, no, let's just take a chance, let's do it for less money than, than we could have done if we would have done as a network show, but let's tell the story that we want to tell. Well, let's also, you yeah, have more control, that's what I like about it. It's, yes, it's, I love control, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's an old, there's an old when a development starts working on Hollywood, they'll take a script, and by the time it's been developed, it becomes nothing like what the original yeah. script is. And a lot of times that's the problem. What I love about this show is it, it kept with the artist, it kept your vision. Yeah. And and is there is and you've always maintained that in the show. It's like I look at Eugenio Derbez who came out with his movie recently, it's the number one Spanish language film. Oh movie. yes, I love the movie. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was his vision. And I really think if you get close to what the artist's vision is, it, it there's a truth to it and that truth is what you're telling. Yeah. And and I heard you before you introduced me, you were talking about how you were encouraging uh, members of the audience that yes or not with the with with the web being that there's, there's really breaking a lot of barriers where before you had to have a network behind you and you had to have millions upon millions of dollars and you had to have a name actor uh, attached and all that and, by the, and what happens is as you do that things start getting watered down because and then everybody has an opinion and then when you, you wind up with a show that maybe the, the original from what the original vision was to what it winds up on television is, is very different when you have when you're doing something for less money but you get creative freedom. Yeah. And I'm an independent filmmaker. I mean, I, before this, I did a couple of independent movies, so I come from that world. Well, you did okay. an awards-winning independent film. It was called... Uh, East Side Story. East Side Story. Right. Which yeah. is... Uh, 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 About being gay and being Mexican-American at the same time, and how sometimes those two worlds don't mix. <laughs> well, it's, uh, you also deal with that with this show, which is great, because you, yeah. you really give a voice to the LGBT community, you're great with that, and you're giving a voice to Latinos, and it's a voice that Latinos are controlling. I mean, your background, you, you, you're, you're, you're Cuban. I was born in Cuba, so I'm, I was, I'm an immigrant. Came here when I was 11. Yeah, 11 years old. Yeah, yeah. And what, what, was that your immigrant experience? Uh, was it in Miami? Of course, as required by law. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's great about Miami is, is I, I got a passport and went to there one time. It was just amazing. <laughs> Amazing country. Uh, yeah, Miami is very international. Venezuela, Cuba. Yeah, it's everybody. It's everybody. a big old melting pot. Uh -huh. That's great. Yeah, I can stand it myself, so I got out and moved out here. Moved yeah. out here. Yeah. What, what would you say would be one of the? Um, did you ever think that this show would be this successful? Um, I don't. I don't really think about that too much. I think this is what, you know, whatever is in front of me for the day. I just yeah. get up and thank God that I'm alive, and I just do it. That and is you. such an artist way, because it's yeah. all you can do. You can't. Really One of the biggest pitfalls is like is getting out of expectations. Yeah. Because I learned from my life, and that's just my professional life, my personal life as well, that when I have expectations of anything, people, jobs, whatever, I usually wind up a little bit underwhelmed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So to walk in with no expectations and just do the best that what's in front of me, that that's usually the best. That that is the best. I, I mm -hmm. really just think of even uh, uh, how this show came about. I started hearing about the show a while back, mm -hmm. and like, this show. It's, it deals with teenage pregnancy and the East mm -hmm. ah, East Los. And I, I kept hearing about it, and then finally, when I started seeing it, I, I really, I was very proud of the show, that it, it really kept a great vision, and it was a show that was inclusive, and dealt with every single issue out there. And right now, this show, 
uh, the demographics for the high schoolers who watch this show. Oh yeah, it's a high school. I mean, I think people find it very relatable. Yeah. And face it, most of us never leave high school as far as growing up, right? <laughs> we, we keep thinking, especially men, we, we stay like 14 years old in our yeah. house for yeah. the rest of our lives. And <laughs> well, Hollywood's a big high school. Yeah, it's, so it's, Hollywood is so how pretty you are and how popular you are. Yes, yes. exactly. <laughs> so, um, what would you say after this? Is there something in the new in the horizon you're looking at? Uh, yeah, I want to go to Jamaica for a week. Jamaica for a week. <laughs> Where you, do you like your chicken and all that stuff? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love yeah. Jamaica too. Yeah. One of the, one of the sh issues they deal with, especially, is teen pregnancy. And uh, I want to show you a clip from that. Mm. You don't touch it, dick fool. Yeah, I'm just trying to help. You caught cheating on me with some skinky asshole trying to help? Well, why you gotta be like that? You know, you know you're my girl. So we looked at the ultrasound and the amniotic sac is intact. Am I gonna lose my baby? Man, shut up, sissy. Let the lady talk. Your baby is fine. What? You hear that? Hey, hey, Junior, you gonna be alright? You'll be strong, it's like the old man. I'm afraid that it's a little too soon to know the baby's sex. It's gonna be a boy. Okay. You just stay off that ankle until the sprain heals. Hey, lady, don't worry about it. I'm gonna help her out. Man, stop calling her lady. She's a doctor, stupid. Man, I know she's a doctor. She's a lady doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you call me stupid all the time? Just shut up. You better stop being mean. Shut up. You're so rude. Don't touch me. Where are you going? You promised the lady doctor you were gonna take care of me. I am. That's why I'm leaving. What? Look, if I take you with me, you're gonna be around smoking and drinking, and it shit ain't good for the baby. You've been out every night. You haven't changed your life at all. Or oh, should I? I'm not pregnant. <laughs> Man, you gotta get me on a dance five. You gotta talk to Freddy. You know that was my dream, girl. Oh, See, your dreams ended when you got knocked off. Man, I didn't know being pregnant was gonna be like this. I'm sick all the time. I'm getting fat, and the AIDS don't wanna screw me no more. <laughs> this is just the beginning. You got 18 more years of that. 18 years? Unless you get lucky and Junior goes to Juvie. God, you're such a bitch. I know what you're trying to do. You're jealous of me, so you're trying to destroy my self-esteem and you take away everything I want. <sighs> what, like Abraham? No, like Jacob. You knew I liked him and you went after him anyways. It's not my fault Jacob went for me. No one can compete with me. Really? Well, Jesse can. Who's dating Jacob now, bitch? Wow. You know what? I don't ever want to talk to you again. Never. I hope you have twins. It's interesting to see like like like, like, like those little clips and you guys put them together. It's like <laughs> yeah, no, it's great. Because also you're looking at it, and that's like I give a uh, shout out to Rafael Agustin, who uh, my producer, and, and works a lot with me. Is that we're all, we're really trying to to show the story, mm -hmm. and when you look at it, you know, first of all, Jesse Garcia, the, the guy who heard it, uh, he's a good friend. He was in Latino Logs. He's he's been he was in on Broadway in the Pee Wee Herman show. So really, he's from Dustin until Dawn right, right now. Dustin, yeah, he's leading yeah. that. He's doing yeah. quite well. And so I'm watching it and I go, wow, he's such a jerk. Yeah. And you know, he's the nicest guy. When you're watching him that, he plays a jerk really well. Perfection. Yes. Yeah, perfection. <laughs> but Ceci became a fan favorite. Why, why do you think that is? I think because of, uh, she was very relatable. I mean, she was like this kind of a hood rat at the beginning of the show. And, and, and you know, she's, she's, she's a bit skanky and she sleeps around. And, and then she gets knocked up by this guy. And you, you saw like he's not, he's not, he's not ever going to win Father of the Year award. And then um, she, dis, she goes to, we follow her journey. And we follow her journey where she decides, well, she, first she thinks she's going to have an abortion, but then she doesn't think that's right. So then she decides to give up the baby for adoption, and she doesn't think that's right. And then she decides to keep the baby. Mm -hmm. So people felt very, very connected to this character, you know, and, and you, you got to see her as she was, as the, you know, the decision of what, what, what she wanted to do with, with her pregnancy. As, as you're developing the show in, in the writer's room, are, are, you, are, are you getting the metrics early on to know which characters are, are really going forward? Does Hulu get involved with that and say, this, this character's doing really well, maybe you should think about keeping her? No, I, I go a lot by, by gut, mm -hmm. by what I like, and, and I usually feel that, I, it's like, you know, I, 
you, 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 you try to tell your story and you're, you, you hold it to your vision. But I think the truth is that 90% of the things I like are what people seem to like. Yeah. There seems to be like these fan favorites that just come up and people just fall in love with. This, this season, I don't want to give away too much. And by the way, I want to say that it feels like it's an educational show, but it's not. There's, it's so steamy and so sexy and so funny. And the educational part is like, I would say like five, ten percent. And a lot of times when, when, when you read about the show, like, you know, when we were, the LA Times did a story on us, and of course it's great to be in, in the LA Times on the cover page and everything, but it, we, we made it sound too educational, I'm like, shit. <laughs> we're, 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 we're a little educational, but we're really a very fun, sexy show. So I just want to, if you guys haven't seen the show, I encourage you to watch it, and don't be turned, don't be turned off by the educational, because that, that is important, but I always put that last. There's, there's not a test after the show. <laughs> no. I, when I was when I was a, when I was a teen, uh, there was an, uh, uh, a show called ABC Afternoon Special, and I remember I used to get together with friends and we used to get high. We used to smoke weed, and we used to sit around and just laugh at how corny the stories were. So when I was developing the show, I was like, well, I don't want kids sitting around home smoking weed and laughing at my show, you know? So we, we work very hard at making it hip, making it cool, being ahead of what's going on. Like, you know, right now with what's going on with um, racial profiling, with police brutality, that's all coming into season three. So they're going to be smoking going, this is really educational. <laughs> this is real, man. <laughs> and I'm not talking about the weed. <laughs> Maybe I won't smoke anymore. This is so good. <laughs> it's, and that's how, and see, and that's how you make change because when people start seeing themselves, and that's the thing that we I hear a lot is like, uh, and and season two we have this um, very powerful story about domestic violence and about the, what it looks like to be the perfect relationship between this this man and this woman, and he's like the perfect guy, handsome, drives some black Mercedes, is a car salesman, has a great apartment, and. Um, he, he's at first he's everything that a girl would ever want, but then he starts beating the shit out of her. Yeah. Those, those and things. how do you keep that? How do you keep that facade when everybody says, "Oh my God, you got the greatest guy in the world," and yet behind closed doors he's he's beating you up? Yeah, well, you unfortunately, know, unfortunately, that's kind of how it does work out. I mean, this sometimes is the perfect guy that, that yeah. people look at, and yeah, and you'll see a perfect perfect home. What's great about it, you're really shedding a light in a, such an entertaining way in topics that need to be. Explore. Yeah, and I think we I, talk about it. It's like it creates conversation and dialogue, and, yeah. and, and we want people, especially I want to say people, I want Latinos because that's, that's really yeah. what this show is about. I want Latinos to watch the show, agree with it, disagree with it, get pissed off about it, talk about it. But it's a show that creates a reaction. Yeah. It's not a, a, like a lot of shows you watch. You go, okay, what's for dinner? You know. This show gets you very involved in the characters. Well, what I like about you is, is, is you're very much a populist artist in a lot of ways. And, and I think that's, I, I say that as a compliment. Mm -hmm. Because I look at guys like Tyler Perry and, and people that really represent their cultures very well in a lot of ways. And sometimes people don't think they do. But he started off in theater. Yeah. And when you have a theatrical point of view, you need ticket sales to make it work. So you're always going to be on the pulse mm -hmm. of the audience. And I think. A lot of times people get away with that in development because they'll say, this is going to be really interesting. And it's not the word, this is going to be really entertaining. Yeah. And I think with you, you have been really entertaining. And you've mixed so many different genres of questions. It's been amazing. So, I, I, worked, I worked with Tyler Perry for two years. That was Actually, that's what I was working for when this show came up. I was living in Atlanta. I was the only non-African American working on, 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 on his shows. And that was so much fun. I had the best time. And, um, but you know, I just came in and said, I'm gay, I'm Latino, and I thought they were going to fire me because, you know, in the, in back in the South, they're very religious. <laughs> and it's like, you know, they, and I'm like, oh my God, the minute I open my mouth and I start telling what I feel. But, you know, they, 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 were, they were, it was great. It was like, oh, cool, man, you're, you're just crazy as the rest of us. Welcome, you know? Well, I think it's great because I think a lot of times I've, some of my biggest uh, supporters in Hollywood have been African Americans. Yeah. You know, I mean, Keenan Ivory Wayans gave me my first job in Living Color. Um, Matt TV, you know, the guy who gave me a job, his wife was Puerto Rican. At one point, he understood anything Latino was. And we were talking about this backstage. A lot of times, people in development don't understand that something can be a drama and a comedy at the same time. 
Yeah. Whereas Latinos, we get it. I think we get it. We yeah. sit there and we'll, we'll be crying one minute and laughing exactly. That's how we are. Yeah. And, and we understand. Go like polar in the American market. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the great thing. But you're, you're using the genre of, of telenovela in some ways. Yeah. Also, but telenovela, you, you have to include everyone in that audience watching the show. Yeah. You've got the abuela watching it. You've got the family watching it. You've got and I think you do that in this so well. Yeah, and that's something that we that, that are, I'm really proud of is that, that um, in a lot of Anglo shows, parents don't exist. It's only about the kids, only about the kids, and the parents are just stuck in the background opening the refrigerator and asking what time you're going to be home. And in our show, we bring the parents into the show. The parents are a big part of the story. And actually, in season three, kind of a spoiler, but we're creating a love story between two of the parents. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, it's like, yeah, life goes on. And, and so older people do have sex. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Why else would you be watching the show? <laughs> I'm looking forward to my older years. <laughs> I thought I had to be tired, but you're telling me no. That's good. People are having sex. Yes. Okay. Yes. And they're, and they're older. And, well, we're Latino. We speak Spanish. It's a romance language. It is very romantic. German mm -hmm. and English is a scientific language, which means we'll get laid, but we'll never launch a rocket ship. <laughs> Who cares about a rocket ship? We're, we're getting laid. We're going to stay here on Earth. Let the rest of the people go up there. We're on Earth. We're having a party. We're having a good time here. We're having sex. So. At least not that rock. <laughs> <laughs> I need that rock started. So, uh, how does Planned Parenthood feel about all this? Are they ecstatic? Or are they yeah, they're very happy. They're very happy. They're happy. Yeah, they are. They are. They're, I know there was a, when the show came up, when the show premiered, there was like, they had like 30 or 40,000 additional hits the first month that our show was on the air wow. because we would make reference to Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. So they got a lot of more, more awareness. And again, it's just about, it's not about telling people what to do, okay? This is never, I mean, I'm not a preachy person in real life and I don't like to preach to anybody because when people preach to me I turn them off right away but I think the important thing is to give people options to say hey you know this is here and this is here and this is here and look at it, check it out mm -hmm. you know and I think um, that's, that's what we try to do with the show so you're giving people options you're, you're dealing with some tough issues but also what I like about what you're doing is, is kind of what I also say about Latinos in, in Hollywood entertainment it's it doesn't have to be a Latino show it should be an afterthought that Latinos are in it and involved in it. It's not that we, we walk around and go, I didn't wake up this morning, I know you didn't either, go, as a Latino, what am I going to do today? I don't know. <laughs> it's Chila to start. <laughs> Got to chorizo. And, and what's refreshing about it is it is a, it is a, a Latino family and group that can be comical, can be, it's warts and all. Yeah. It's not going to sit there and say, we're showing you the perfect Latino. A lot, a lot of times it's not, but that's also what makes people human. Is you're seeing every aspect of them, and you're seeing all the fragility of humankind, and you're seeing Latinos as dimensional people. Yeah, no, we, we definitely want to do that. Mm -hmm. So, and is there another cause that you look at that you go, I'd really like to bring up in the show? Well, you know, you got to stay up with the times, and I think right now with what's going on with with how these kids are, are getting harassed by police officers. Mm -hmm. Just because they're wearing a hoodie, and, yeah. and there's three of them walking down the street wearing hoodies, and right away they're going to get pulled over. Uh, that's something that I think we want to explore in this yeah. season. Um, we also are going to continue with the domestic violence. We're looking into um, uh, we're dealing with incest, mm -hmm. which is a big thing. In, well, not just in our community, but it's something that people don't talk about. And yeah, we, 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 actually, what, what Norman Lear did in the early days of television. I mean, he. He dealt with rape, he dealt with, you know, interracial relationships, he dealt with all that. And I think what television has the, the great capacity to do, is, and, and the internet, and where everything's going, is tell the stories that can help change lives. And I, I think you're doing it so well. Yeah. One of the big issues is, of course, affected uh, not just our population, but so many, has been HIV. And uh, I think your show does it well. So just take a look at this clip. Why did I faint? You have the flu. We did blood work to see if that's all it was. And since you authorized us to test for pregnancy and STDs, we have the results. Okay. Vanessa, you're HIV positive. Oh. I'm what? I'm sorry, Vanessa. You're HIV positive. 
HIV often doesn't have any symptoms, so the fainting wasn't related. I know this is really scary, but it's good you got tested. We can help you. <laughs> so you're saying I'm gonna die? It's no longer a death sentence when you take the right medication and learn to take care of yourself. I don't take care of myself. I have 16% body fat. Well, eating and staying fit is a great start. But well, we can set you up with an HIV specialist to get you the best treatment to live a normal life with HIV. No, I can't have HIV. Okay, I'm not gay, I'm not a junkie. HIV doesn't just happen to gays and IV drug users. It can happen to anyone. This is bullshit! This isn't happening. I can see how unsettled you are about this, Vanessa. But you know, anger is a natural response. Have you ever discussed HIV with your sexual partner? No, nobody talks about HIV. And I slept with more than one guy. It's important to notify all your partners to keep it from spreading. And we can help you with that. So, I'm gonna go get your prescriptions. What's up, V? I just got your message, not funny. No joke. I have HIV. Shit. I'm sorry. You should be sorry, you probably gave it to me. Nah, not me. I didn't. Negative two weeks ago. Maybe Jacob gave it to you. No, it could have been him. I, I haven't hooked up with him in eight months. Plus, he always uses a condom. Smart dude. Good luck on finding out whoever gave it to you. <laughs> Wow. That's what we call a real educational scene. You know, but here's what's That's really right. educational. It's, it's educational. It's everything you'd ever see in a pamphlet. But you're watching that scene, and you're not turning your eyes away from it. And, and that's what's great, because it's, it's very subliminal, even though it sounds like it's right on there. Yeah. But all the words you're saying is, is no one ever talks about HIV. And, you know, all those certain things that, this, that she's saying that it's true. Very few people talk about HIV. Very few people understand the dangers of HIV. And, it, and you, have it, you gave it to her, who actually is kind of the antagonist in the, in the show. So she's been kind of the, the mean girl mm -hmm. against, against Ceci. Yeah. So it was also a way of showing, I think, that it can happen to anyone. Yeah. Uh -huh. Which I thought was great about that. Yeah. So, spoiler alert, who, who, who gave it to her? <laughs> oh, this guy named Freddy. <laughs> <laughs> she was having sex with so many people, I lost track of that. Was, <laughs> it's always a guy named Freddy, isn't it? <laughs> always a guy named Freddy, causing problems. But that's a, that's a real educational scene where you just guys watch. And that, that's actually, that is from uh, uh, season one. And one thing that we, that we learned from season one is that in season two, we have a lot of educational scenes. We have a lot, we have educational stuff, but we found so many more interesting ways of putting out the information. So it's not like a counselor. One thing we decided is in season two is we don't want counselors talking to the, to the students. We want the students talking to each other. Yeah. So we have a lot more like kids talking to kids and talking to each other. Because the truth is, when you're in high school, you don't want to listen to anybody else. You, know, you just listen to your friends. Well, it was really, I mean, one, it's very well acted. It was very realistic. And She's a great actress. Tracy Pettis is her name. She's a real, real solid actress. Very solid. Mm -hmm. What's great about it is that I see a lot of different, kind of almost shades in your work that you, you really do use everybody. I mean, there's, there's, it's not just such a teen drama that's all about teens. There, there's, there's ages and there's different groups in there, and I, I think that's, that's really commendable. That's who we are as a culture. When you go to uh, you, most Latino households, you see abuela, tias, yeah. primos, you know, it's, it's everybody together. Yeah, we don't, so I, I, embrace, I embrace that. We don't put our families in the home too quickly. <laughs> you know, uh, we don't. I, my grandmother was with us forever. And, uh, even though I argued that she could go to the home, but no one allowed that to happen. I'm proud of her. So, um, Diabetes, you can deal with that ever? That's a big one of the... the no, not yet. That's not sexy enough. <laughs> <laughs> it couldn't be a heavy diabetic? Come on, no? Okay, so diabetes, maybe not in the future. Uh, but uh, you've used a great cast. A, a lot of them 
young and they're they're making their names in Hollywood. Yeah. Jesse Garcia is one. Mm -hmm. He's been on Broadway. He's been in movies like Quinceanera. He yeah. did that one. Yeah. He's a really good actor now. He's in, in Robert Rodriguez's network, which is giving me, you know, it's making me give a, a great sense of pride that Robert Rodriguez mm -hmm. now has his own network and now he's taking people. And so I'm seeing a... And he's another one who hires a lot of Latinos. Like I know he was a, a friend of mine uh, Joe, who's, who's, uh, who's a Latino director, and he went to Texas to shoot one of his episodes. Mm -hmm. And he's very oh, much... Joe Mendes. Joe Mendes, yes. Love Joe Mendes. Yeah, Joe's a great guy. He's a really good guy. And he and his, uh, from what I hear, his the writing room for From Dust Until Dawn, and it was 100% Latinos, but he has a lot of Latinos in the room also. Well, I, so, I, it's such a contrast to what most of Hollywood is. It's, it's, I'm a member of the Writers Guild, which I happen to call the whitest guild of America. <laughs> if, if, I think we're two percent. Yeah. I know we're two percent. If we die, it's that's over. It. That's it. Like, <laughs> I, I was on a plane with Josefina Lopez, who did Real Women Have Curves, and I go, if this plane goes down, we're taking. We're, they've lost fifty percent of all the writers in Hollywood. <laughs> but so, like, I mean, this is how rare it is. This is the most amazing part of it. But yet you have so many Latinos be in front and behind the camera, and so is Robert Rodriguez. And hopefully that is how we move ahead. I mean, we have to. I mean, look at look at Tyler Perry. I mean, yeah. with, there's I would say there's a lot of African Americans working on that show. A lot. <laughs> and I, I dealt with it in Living Color that Keenan Ivory Wayans hired a lot of African Americans. And I don't think it's a bad thing. I think you hire who you know. We just need more Latinos in the business to hire who they know. Because there's a, there's a statistic, and it says that. If the money that goes to the Latino community uh, from Hollywood stays within the, fan, the community, that means Latinos will reinvest in their community. When the recession, we lost so much in housing because Latinos invested in houses. We love our community, we love our houses. We're not, and that's something that's so tantamount about us. Now this is, you went for the first season and you didn't know where it was gonna go. It was, uh, you, were you, you were surprised a little bit by the success, or? Well, I was very surprised that because uh, talking about telenovelas, the, the first season is 24 episodes, and we structured, we wrote it, and like, you know, telenovelas always have a big happy ending at the end, and lovers come together and everybody celebrates, and I kind of did that at the end of the, the first season. People got together, and, and the lovers finally hooked up, and everything. Yes. And it premiered, and within a couple of days, it's like everybody who was watching the show and who was asking for season two, and we're like, what the hell? I mean, we, I sent all these kids to college, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. So, so the big challenge for season two was that kind of had to clean slate, yeah, and start with a with pretty much a brand new cast. And that was that was that was pretty scary so when, they, when the show was about to premiere. Because I'm like, oh my god, I don't have only like two of the cast members from season one came back to season two. So the rest went to college or, or hopefully Oxnard College. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Give an Oxnard yeah. College yeah. shout-out. Yeah. 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 When they leave the high school, it's like, go to Oxnard College, good luck to you. Give me a couple of pamphlets out there on the show. Close up on Close up. <laughs> you can't buy that advertisement, Oxnard College, okay? Yeah, because, I mean, that's the great thing. They, they're going off, so you had two cast members left. Uh, and we were going to do, you know, um, East Los, the... Um, the college years. The college years, no. <laughs> no, East Los, the college years, wasn't going to work. And we were going to do East Los uh, European Vacation. Uh, <laughs> we are going to do East Los 2, so all these things are out. So you went on to season two, trailer two. And uh, season two, with who, of course, saying, oh my God, look at these numbers. Yeah. Uh, a hit and success. And also, a uh, big compliment to you. You know who else uh, ended with big, you know, romances and all that stuff and big family got Shakespeare. Uh, so Shakespeare always ended with a wedding whenever he. Oh really? Yeah. yeah, he looked at, look at how Game of Thrones had a wedding too, but uh, that's and everybody one. dies. Yeah. Everyone died. So <laughs> to the opposite. Yeah. So, um, but season two is going to be. It's a great season for you, right? You oh, like love it, love it. Yeah. And oh, and I do want to say, and this is something that's really um, that season one. I don't know how much you guys know about that. Um, you, should, you have union and non-union shows in, in when you shoot in LA, and non-union shows are usually low budget, and you work with who you get and all that. And um, and union budgets are like you get more money, and then you have everybody's in the union. You have the writer skill, the director skill, mm -hmm. Diazzi, SAG, and season one because again we did it for so little money was a non-union show. The only union in season one was SAG. 
which is the Screen Actors Guild. So we had, we had, we did have SAG yeah. actors. Did they do a SAG low budget or what? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Been, now we wouldn't be able to do it. Huh. And the, but season two, because we got more money, mm -hmm. we were able to go union across the board. And I have to say that the, that it shows when you compare season one and season two. Well, I mean, you know, it, it's you laid the great base. You, mm -hmm. you have the, all the roots down mm -hmm. deep, and that's great, and that's a compliment to you. But I think season two, the unions. I'm a big. I, I I love unions because I I I believe a lot of times they they're, they're looking after the worker and they're mm -hmm. looking after the people behind the camera. And the writers guild, even though I call it the writers guild, is you know still going to give my pension someday. Yeah, they're good people. Yeah. They're good people. And uh, but season two, I think, is going to be very exciting. So take a look at this trailer. Who lead with the teachers? Who are you, Captain? I started loosening up with some stretches. You just had a baby. Aren't you stretched out enough? Mm -hmm. oh. You gonna come with me? Hell well, yeah. Just because I'm a virgin doesn't mean you can't have fun. So you sure the angle to one? I'm just being out of fun. <laughs> so where were you? God, you're driving me crazy. I'm just getting started. Away with your boyfriend? Oh, sure thing. You know you're my man. Is Jacob gonna be there? Girl, it's senior year. Get it together. I want you to be best friend. More friend. What's up, Sid? Hey, come on. You've changed. You're ambitious. I like that. So, uh, oh no, that's just like the tip of the eye. Was he putting nice sugar in that bag? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, Cremora? Was that Cremora in that bag? <laughs> so, uh, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting season. So, that's really good. What I love about the show, and I know it is educational, because, but it's entertainment. That happens at the end of the day, if you're entertained and you get a message out of it, that's, I think, so brilliant yeah. and so great. Thank you. Go ahead and blog back to the The show is on Hulu, and you can watch the show for free. It doesn't cost anything. You do have to watch commercials because it's it's a half-hour show, so you watch it. And you watch some, you know, have to order commercials and Burger King and all that. But it, you can go home and watch it right now. It's like it's, there's no charge because I, I think, I, and even to this day, I still get people who get very confused who think, well, you have to pay for Hulu. You have to join Hulu now. There's two Hulus. There's regular Hulu, which you watch the show for free. And then there's Hulu Plus, mm -hmm. which is where you you pay I think six dollars a month, and then you can you get all the episodes at the same time, so you can binge watch yeah. everything. Right. But Hulu free, regular Hulu, you can watch all, you can watch all season one. And I think we're almost they're, they posted most of season two, so it's not something that costs money or anything. You just go home, type Hulu, East Los High, and you're in. Are the commercials help uh, dealing with the issues? Nope. Commercials are Burger King. I mean, we have all the big advertisers Burger right King now. could be diabetes. He <laughs> <laughs> wants that story, huh? Yeah, I do. I want that diabetes story. I'm not revealing anything about myself. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I don't have diabetes, okay? But if I did, I'd probably say it. But, uh, uh, well, they could have Trojan. You know, Trojan man, and all of a sudden, you just pull it. Oh, okay. Wow. But you're the, you're, you're the force behind it, but, uh, you have a great cast. Yeah. Awesome, I love, I love awesome the cast. cast. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me introduce two cast members for you. Andrea Sixtos and Vanessa Vasquez. Hi. Vanessa, how are you? Andrea. Hi. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Oh, no. Okay. Carlos, sit right here. You, Carlos, you don't want to sit there? No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Carlos, she's in there. We really sit together. Okay. Okay. We thought you saw us being together. We come from such a respectful culture. <laughs> Isn't that good? Everyone's so good. So, um, how are you two enjoying East Los High? 
course. So exciting. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> proud and honored to be a part of it. It's yeah. groundbreaking for Latinos, online shows, everything. Mm -hmm. Especially for the actors, because Latino actors have a lot of opportunity you know, through the show. Yeah. Andrea, you, you were in Quinceanera. Your uh, my sister was one of the main characters. Well, she was a supporting character in that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was featured in like the party scene. Well, it's like Avengers. You're, we're, you're in Avengers too, but it's like, what was the role in Avengers? Wait, your well, sister and my sister is completely mixed up. Oh, your sister? Oh my god. You just reached from the wrong person. Oh, I'm blaming, I am now blaming my uh, development person. <laughs> Jesse was in the Avengers too. Jesse was in Avengers. I think Jesse had told me that. I think Jesse, um, Jesse, because Jesse was in Avengers and he was like, oh, I'm in the Avengers and he's so happy. He was like a radio man or, or, or Yeah, or, they were, you know. Yeah, and I think your sister was in Avengers. Yeah. That's what he's telling me about. They're so partners. how has your journey been in Hollywood? Uh, well, I started in 2003. So, uh, you know, I was pretty young. And I moved here from Northern California with my whole family. We all decided to come over here and, you know, live the dream of being in the entertainment business. And, um, you know, um, we, we had some wins. We had some wins with commercials and, you know, some feature films and, you know, it's all pretty, I, we were, I, you know, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> 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 you know, our ultimate goal was to be a lead in, a series mm -hmm. and and to you know get this job I mean it's a ridiculous honor and a huge win for me and as well as my sister Alicia she was actually mm -hmm. the main character in the first season as Maya oh. and uh, yeah. so you get the sibling hookup <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> Yeah. Not even. I auditioned for this. Yeah. I mean, people, uh, how are fans reacting to you guys? I mean, you, 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 are, you, are, are fans really coming out and, and walking up to you and all that stuff? Um, actually, I was. I've been recognized once. What? Yeah, I was actually dancing in Hollywood somewhere, and someone <laughs> came up to me and was just like, "Are you an actress? Are you on East Los High?" Okay. He was like, "Oh my God." <laughs> She's a huge East Los High fan, and she came over and she was like, <gasps> <laughs> She's all looking down, all embarrassed. I'm like, oh my god. I know what's, what's great about that is if, if, if your fans of actors and writers and producers and all that come up and say, say something, because a lot of times actors, when we work in Hollywood and writers are there, you, like you said, Carlos, you said, he doesn't, he's like, I don't get out much, you know, and. And most of the time you don't. So when you do get out and someone walks up to you, it's such a, I was just in Texas last weekend teaching a class and a woman's like, I read your book. Thank you. And I was like, oh my God, you're my number one fan. I'm going to protect this woman right now. Because you know, there's like one fan in Texas. I was protecting her. So. It really makes you feel special. Like, I mean, you made an influence on somebody's life. And the same thing happened to me, and I was actually in Hollywood too, at a bar. It was really weird. Okay. And so it happened, this guy came up and like, hey, are you Vanessa Vasquez? I was like, oh God, I gave him my number last time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, are you on East Coast? And I was like, oh yeah, you know. Uh, and he's like, I love your character, she's really crazy and cool. He's like, can I take a picture with you? I was like, oh man, well, let me go to the bathroom real quick. <laughs> I'm in this bar doing research. Yeah, my next character. So, um, what is the big plans? I mean, I mean, now you're in the show. Have you, have you been thinking? If you, if you had your dream in five years, what would it be? I'm asking each one of you. So, in five years, acting wise, where would, where would you be? Oh man. Uh, Besides the series, because we don't have to leave yet. Well, geez. <laughs> in five years, I hope to be. Um, a large step forward, a very large step. It's just a lot of hard work, as I have been doing, you know, working hard to get where I am now. And hopefully, I continue to get, you know, large roles like Jocelyn and Easel's High, and hopefully, maybe, um, I love doing series shows. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's very fast paced, and, you know, you get so close to the cast and I love that so I, I'd say you know more 
leads in you know series. Now, Vanessa, because you, I mean, you came from Texas. Yes. You know, basically. Yeah. Like, <laughs> You must know my one single friend. Yeah, I think she. That's my aunt. Oh, yeah. good, good. Always yeah. me <laughs> so, um, you came to this town. I did about two and a half years ago too, and I think for the same reasons. I was doing acting out there, and also when I was in college, when I graduated, um, I came straight over here because my agent, a lot of the stuff that she was sending me on, were just like little small co-star roles, and it was always a. You know, the little small role that nobody wants to do in Hollywood, like the girl all naked and stuff, and, or, you know, the skunk guy number five. <laughs> you know what? I always saw myself as, um, as an artist doing stuff that really um, inspired others to, I guess, help change the world for the better. So when I came here, the show was just like perfect. And then plus, I studied psychology and theater. So it kind of all went hand in hand. Psychology and theater. Very yeah. Cool. Wow. Very good. Nice. Um, <laughs> and uh, you, you actually were on this stage in Latino Logs. Oh, yeah. So, I was like the East LA beauty queen of La Movies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the Oxnard uh, Strawberry Festival. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. I was the Oxnard Strawberry Festival queen. Thank you, Holmes. She was the first Oxnard Strawberry and you did Metro, of course. You came out of Metro. Metro Madness, yeah. Metro Madness. It's like... Viva la raza! This stage is getting more Broadway actors and people in TV shows and, and all because, you know, uh, what you deserve it. You deserve it. You know, that's Those are the fun. Fun. And, uh, I think uh, Oxnard is, is such a great community. And I was just... I was at Sugar Beats last night. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> After party. By the way, I went there. So I'm starting to feel a little bit very much at home in Osnard. And uh, it's been really good. So five years from now, what would you be? I really want to be uh, Wonder Woman. Yeah. Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought that would be black. You know, in the, in the show, it's a little bit like brown. So I'm trying to go for the, you know, envision it already. Okay, I'm going to get some blue contacts. So, so Wonder Woman would be it? Yeah. Wonder Woman. <laughs> I was going to do the speed because I was dreaming. That's good. So, now, training wise, I'm going to ask you because we're an institution of educational learning. So, I have to ask this one question. Training wise, education wise. Uh, well, help you? When, I, when we all moved here, my parents got us straight into comedy improv. And so, we did improv for three years in the beginning. Wow. And we did uh, live performances every Sunday, and that really like broke us out of our shells completely. So improv live performances. Yeah. So you all know improv is basically saying yes, you do a scene. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> she said what? Like what? Do it. There's a big shift there. Yes, there yeah. is. Yep. Yes, there is. Yes. If you say no, the scene is over. So. <laughs> So that's, that's great. So you were doing improv? Uh-huh. And then we got into theatrical training mm -hmm. and, um, you know, commercial training and everything. And actually when I turned 17, you know, we, we, we hopped to different, you know, teachers for a few years. And then when I turned 17, we found this brilliant guy, his name is Steven Anderson, who I've been studying to this day, to, to the present day, and he, it's all theatrical, you know, scene right. study. And wow, how much I've grown in his class um, as a person, as an actress, is remarkable. That's great, because it's, it's, people don't realize being an actor is so much about education. All constantly being, constantly keeping up on everything. Yes. You know, and Vanessa? Um, I went to the University of Houston, and I studied theater, like I said, and I also did psychology. But afterwards, um, I really wanted to study with a great acting coach. And so before I came to LA, I did a bunch of research of, really, I wanted to know where like Al Pacino studied because he was one of my favorite actors. And, is his um, acting coach still alive? No, he's still at Lee Strasberg, right? Well, he was in Strasberg, and he also went to Stella Adler. Stella and so I, I applied online, and they did some online interview audition. And I got in, so that's the only thing that I knew before I came out here. And I told my mom, I was like, I gotta go, you know, this time, for real. 
<laughs> and she was like, okay, fine, you know, you graduated college. Because when I was in college, I just wanted to get on I-10 West and just head all the way over here. But because I was the first one in my family to go to college and to get a scholarship and graduate, it was really important for me, especially being Mexican-American. I think some of you know that it's kind of tough to get scholarships and stuff. I, I think a lot of them would know that. <laughs> so yeah, it was really important for me to finish, not only for me, but for my uh, family and the rest of my siblings to come. And then when I came out here, the classes were so expensive there, I really didn't know how I was going to do it. I was so scared. And um, I only had enough money to pay for like my first rent and my first uh, semester of class. And after I finished my first semester, <laughs> I didn't have enough money to continue. So I, um, I heard that they offered scholarships and I had already put in an application, but uh, one of the teachers actually said that he would help me get my, um, my application you know, ahead of others so I can continue my classes. And so I did, I ended up getting a, a full scholarship to go to Stella Adler, which is a $30,000. Wow. Um, dang, and I was very happy. Hey. <laughs> then afterwards, uh, I went to UCB, it's an awesome comedy school. Mm. And that's how I was just like, yeah, whatever, we'll let it go. Because <laughs> I was always crying at Stella Adler. They're just like, yeah, I cry, I suffer. <laughs> this is Latinos, we always get those crying roles. I know. It's like Latinos, but like, I think what's great about uh, our culture in Latinos is we're so comical. No one is funnier than a group of Latinos. I mean, I've been at, at funerals where I'm laughing. I don't want to cry. I don't want to cry. Crying, laughing, the whole bit. Why are you crying? Why are you crying? <laughs> so sad. But what you guys are doing with your education, you're going out and reaching out to a lot of high school kids. Uh, you know, your work, at least there's 15 uh, organizations involved. We do not, yes. You know, with, with, you know, 15 organizations dealing with social issues and, and, and is, is remarkable. You deal with a lot of different issues. Um, there's also the LGBT issue, you know. Uh, and uh, take a look at this clip. <laughs> oh, she was shot surprised. last night. It was packed. It's pretty cool. Are you sure you want to hear it here? This afternoon, I'm going to hear it here. Jocelyn Reyes. Go get him. This goes out to someone really special. It's called the yes. Say yes, mi amor, say yes. Yes to Bandolce flavored mornings in our hoodies and Pikachu yellow pajama bottoms talking about this and that, esto y lo otro. Sabing only for cafe con leche kisses. Cup after cup after cup. Say yes, mi amor, say yes. To one day walking de la mano hand in hand down Caesar Chavez Boulevard, proudly calling you my woman, me, mujer, not afraid of claiming and exclaiming our love, strong like lady wrestlers, luchadoras, but without the masks or secretos, transforming the haters with their love. Say yes. Mi amor, say yes to the journey, to no more yearning. To my vessels, to my petros, to my curves, to what is yours. Say yes to me, mi amor. Say yes. So. What did she think? It was, it was intense. <laughs> well, that's how you make me feel. What's up, Lee? What's up? Yo, so, uh, you don't mind me and my boy here got a bet going? Mm -hmm. What? She didn't find the you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> they want to screw off, man. Hey, why are you getting mad? You just trying to join? What's up? Let me get a taste. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why don't you go suck your boy's dick and taste that? Yo, come on. Let's get out of here. Yo, yeah, well, can we join? Pinche puto. <laughs> come on, Richard. <laughs> Say yes. <laughs> what the hell is your problem? What the hell is 
your problem bringing me here. I'm not like that. What are you talking about? We messed around. You felt good, that's it. Is that all it was for you? Messing around? Because for me, it's a lot more. Yeah, I can see that. You just announced it to the whole world. I love you. And I'm not afraid to admit that. Fine. Be a lesbian. But don't try to make me one. put yourself in someone else's shoes and really feel that it really takes you to another level and you know and it gives you a bigger understanding. Were you guys uncomfortable playing those, those, those roles? Not at all. No. Uh, <laughs> it was no. it was it was really s sad for both of us. Like I think it, it, after each scene we're like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we're like hurting each other's feelings. <laughs> so yeah, because uh, the acting is super both of you guys. Thank you. It's been really good. Yeah. Yeah. What I, what I like about the whole show, this is a, a, a big compliment once again to you, is that you, you have a, a very relaxed acting. That's it's even though you you have high emotions of this, it's very well grounded. Your whole show is very well grounded, and and I, I think it's a disservice sometimes when people say it's an educational type show. Uh, education should be so exciting. And, and our culture is a, a great culture. It should be watched and, and observed. Mm -hmm. And, and Joy, and that's, that's what's so great about it, you're including so many people, so many issues. Is, is it um, the inspiration for that scene? Where, where did you decide to really come about and, and deal with that issue? You know, here's the thing, as a, as, a, as a person, I don't judge. I mean, I'm openly gay, but I think when, when, I, go, when I go to the set, when I'm creating the characters, I'm not about judging anybody. I think a lot of writers and directors have a tendency to, to see a certain person and want to make a statement about them, and I really don't like to do that. Yeah. I like to come in and just present stuff, and then work with amazing actors, and, um, and then just recreate it. You know, and I remember the first, one of the first things we did together was, there's a couple of love scenes that we did, um, that we did, um, uh, that, 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 that uh, they did together, and I remember, like, like I would thought to myself, should I be, Worry, and I was like, no, what's the real fuck? You know, we're, we're professionals here. <laughs> and I remember going and talking to you because, because she, she was coming on to you in the scene, and you were scared because you had never had sex. You, neither of you had ever had sex with a girl in, in, in the show, right? And, but this was your first time. And I remember that one year I started telling her about an experience I had the first time I had sex with a guy, and a guy started coming on to me, and I was so scared. And, and I started real, realizing that I was Jocelyn in a way. Mm -hmm. And the minute you start connecting, mm -hmm. As a director, and they kept, and I think an act, the minute an actor sees you as a director connecting with you, that they see that you respect that. Yeah. You, I can get anything out of an actor. I've realized mm -hmm. because I'm not like 
forcing them to do something. It's like, listen, when I was there, this is how I did it. Yeah, you I mean, know, and it's, and I think it's, I think actors are very, you guys are so intuitive, and I know I've heard so many, that actors have so many bad experiences with directors sometimes, because they force them to do things, or they want them to do things. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, I, it, this is something I've done myself, so what's the big deal? Yeah. You know, I come with that attitude. Well, I, I think that's, that's the great thing about being a director is also, you know, being a leader. And, and a lot of times, great directors have also acted or been the scene. I can never act. I'm terrified of it. <laughs> <laughs> I have so much respect for actors. But, but wow, you're, you're, yeah. em you're empathetic guy. Very much. Yes, that's, that's really yeah. important. And I think yeah. actors sense that. Yeah. And you will get great performances that yeah. happen out of them. Yeah. So which, which is great. Now, one of the issues also in, in following this theme along is that you know coming out to your family talking to your family about your sexuality, especially in the Latino homes, because, you know, we all have an uncle that you wonder why he never got married. <coughs> uncle Hector. Uncle Hector. Uncle, uncle, Barry. Barry. uncle, Barry. uncle, <laughs> uncle Barry. He was the head of the folklorical dance troupe at one of the <laughs> Black Vulture is the choir director. The choir director. Okay, the Black Vulture is the choir director. <laughs> you know, I get folklorical, so first of all, he's very manly. All right. <laughs> but, Let's take a look at the scene from coming out to the family. <coughs> take a look. Don't you want me to be happy? It's claro. We should have a party because her granddaughter is a mari matcha. Bringing shame to our family. Jose, now you know you don't mean that. No, Rosario. She's not like that. There are no homes in my family. What about your cousin, Tio Hector? Why does everybody keep saying that? <laughs> Poor Hector never found the right girl. Yes, he did. Her name was Uncle Barry. They lived together for 20 years. Seeing them, what is that? You're not my granddaughter no more. Jose, you come back here! Jose. Do you feel that way too, now? Of course not. You will always be our granddaughter. You just, just need to give him a little time to, to, to process and mourn. Mourn? I'm not dead. But his dreams for you are. And someday, someday he'll know that too. Okay? It's gonna be okay. What's up, it? Were you looking at the detail that I was looking at at the food on that table? Yeah. <laughs> Check that. I looked, was there carnitas on the table there? You no, know, I always tell, tell people who do props, I go, I don't want to see an enchilada, I don't want to see a taco, because that's, that's usually when you see a, TV, a Latino yeah. TV show that we're always eating tacos and enchiladas. And like, you know, we also eat chicken and mashed potatoes, so, yeah, yeah. so let's, let's shake that up a little bit. Well, my, my mother's Mexican, but she was from Boone, Iowa. So I grew up on, on corn, hams, green beans, all wrapped in a flour tortilla. So I understand what that's like. So, uh, coming out to family members, have you guys, have your, have, People you've known never experienced that? So, had to come out? Uh, I actually spoke to, before I shot the sh uh, started filming, I spoke to a young man uh, about my age uh, who was who happened to be gay, and I, you know, I we were very, you know, comfortable with each other at that time, and I asked him how it was coming out to his family, and he said that he had a pretty easy time. He said that they were pretty understanding and they didn't really, you know, give him a bad time about it. Um, he said that, he did say that his grandfather though, he, <laughs> he did it, he, you know, he accepted it in the beginning, but he never asked questions. He never wanted to see his boyfriend. He never wanted to see him, you know, with another man. That was one thing he wanted to you know, just behind closed doors. What well, I thought was really good in the scene is, is you did address the different generations. And for when she says, he, it's the death of his dream, his mm -hmm. expectation. Mm -hmm. And looking at you going, 
I'm gonna go to you know their wedding. I'm gonna play with my grandchildren, all that. And that was really well, beautifully spoken because you're, you're, it was a very fair point of view on both sides. That were, were I've talked to family members who, who whose children came out that were gay, and that came up a lot. They would say, you know, I don't mind. I just had expected something else, but you're my child, and I love you no matter what, no matter what. And and I think that's very true in the Latino culture. Uh, like I think sometimes people think we're these macho culture. Um, a lot of times we have that, but I've seen a lot of Latinos reach out to gay members of the family and we're extremely accepting. Mm -hmm. Extremely accepting. Um, what's the best advice you'd give to someone who, who is coming out or needs to come out? Well, you know, um, Jocelyn's character is very strong and confident and she knew she was gay before she came out. Obviously, she's known for probably all of her high school years and into, you know, when she was younger. Um, she just had decided that she didn't want to come out until after college. And since this situation happened, she kind of had to accept it and said, okay, all right, Jocelyn, it's time to be strong. It's time to just be who you are and come out to your family and your friends and and accept yourself now in this moment. So honestly, be confident in who you are and and don't let any um, criticism or um, any you know, words put you down because you are beautiful how you are, mm -hmm. no matter what. That's great. I was, I was just I was, I was teaching and uh, there was a kid in my class, uh, you know, gay, and, you know, and uh, one of the things he asked me, he said, you know, how would I do in Hollywood, I, you know, and I said, always be yourself. Yeah. Because you're going to an audition to find someone you're really not, that's part of it, but if you don't ever bring yourself into it, uh, and, and that's part of our truth, you bring yourself, and that's part of the bravery of being an actor. And I just want to mention, you said Texas. I grew up in Texas, and so I have a little cousin that actually just came out recently, um, right before I did the show, in Christmas, and um, it's very conservative growing up, and I, I think even being an artist out there, it was hard for me to express myself, you know, it was like, you gotta go to school, you gotta get a 9 to 5 job, and you gotta get married, and you have kids, and all that stuff, and you just kind of feel trapped. But when she came out, I remember when I'm, I have a, I grew up Catholic, and I have a big Christian uh, family, and one of my cousins said, um, well, you know, that's a choice that you have. And he said, I hope you make the right choice. And she just went off to the room crying, and we were, it was in the middle of Christmas time, and I, literally had to stand up for her and I said no it's not a choice it's like saying that I'm I mean I'm not uh, gay but it's like saying that I have a choice to like a penis <laughs> if I can say that yeah. can I say that yeah you can say that. <laughs> you know? we'll believe about penis it'll be pumpkin yeah <laughs> pumpkin thank you it's like me saying that I like vegetables and pumpkins at the same time but yet I choose pumpkins <laughs> See, we're talking about so many interesting things here at Oscar. Pumpkins and things like that. Carlos, okay. your, your experience? <laughs> oh, I had a very difficult experience with my family. My parents still don't talk to me because I'm gay. Yeah, yeah, they're very old-fashioned. God, it's so tragic. I love my parents, but yeah, they, they have issues with that. It, it, you know, it is an issue. I mean, I think when I started acting at 17, I was going to go Shakespeare, and my grandfather saw me in tights, and I'm sure he was what he was at. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I do want to say is like, listen, you, you get over it. Because listen, we're, I, I, like I said, I'm an immigrant. I came here, I didn't speak the language. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I had, kids in school laughing at me because I didn't speak the language because I was gay. And you know, you get to a point in your life where you go, this thing is either going to destroy me mm -hmm. or I'm going to get really strong and I'm going to overcome this. Mm -hmm. And we have a choice. We do have a choice when it comes to things like that. Yeah. And if I let those people bully me and listen to their bullshit and their ignorance, because that's what it is, mm -hmm. ignorance and fear and lack of education. Yeah. And if you get sucked into that, <laughs> 
And what happens is you wind up an alcoholic, or you wind up killing yourself, mm -hmm. or with a lot of self-hatred. Yeah. You know, and I just, I love, and I express myself to my art, and who I am, and, um, and I cannot expect everybody to feel the same way I feel. So that's, I guess that's why I'm not so non-judgmental, because I've been judged growing up, yeah. and I don't like that feeling. It's not a good feeling, especially coming from people supposedly loving you yeah. and our family and everything. Especially with family. You know, but we have, we, we as an individual, we can break that. Yeah. You know, we can break that, and I decided to do that, and I'm just, moving on, and I love them for who they are, and, um, and I just accept myself, and I love others, and that's it. Well, as Latinos, I think, I think it's also especially for us, especially personal, that as, as Latinos, no one hurts a Latino more than another Latino. And, uh, and you know, and no one hurts us more than our families. So I'm, I'm glad Sometimes, to see you. Know. Well, you've, you've, I mean, what I love about you is, as, as an artist, you're, you're not judgmental, but I also think that is such a big part of great artists, that, that you're, you're observing, you're seeing with the world, and you're showing it to an audience and saying, look what I see. And, and it, it isn't, you know, when you a uh, writing trick is you always ask people to tell your story and more people almost everyone I've ever met wants to be understood that's why they tell their story they want to be understood and you're you're bringing out a point of view and you know I applaud you for that what you're doing it's great it's not all serious on East Los High oh man the dancing <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah we have this so much going on with that dancing humor and jokes yeah by the way every writer that I've ever hired for the show Comedy. It's a comedy right. Yeah, I've never seen So even within the, the drama, there's always not very dark humor, but there's always some well, some levity. I love levity and I love to bring you know, when I hate those shows and those movies, everything's so heavy and yeah. everybody's so frios, you know, and I'm like, yeah, fuck that. Let's let's have some fun with stuff. <laughs> You know, Latinos, we're, we're not the problem, we're the solution. So some different way of thinking. And we are, not only that, we're, we're not victims. You know, we're not going to allow ourselves to be victims. And you guys are at all. There are no the victims world. in the show. None. There's hundreds of characters in the show, there's not one victim. And that's, yes. that is the best way to do it. And also, I love the fact that I'm hearing all the humor. Yeah. There is, you know, there's there's a joke line on everything. Mm -hmm. and And that is brilliant. Because we will mix humor and comedy and it's everything. And I think Tyler Perry does a lot in his work too. Yeah, his thing's a little bit just like this. You can get nose please watching the show. Yeah, so yeah, so it goes from heavy drama to like comedy. <laughs> and I try to, to blend it a little more. You're moving slowly yeah. up the peak. Or, no, just, just, just finding it within the scene where sometimes mm -hmm. some other, like, I mean, he, I love him and he's. His thing is great, yeah. but he goes from like very, 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 very dramatic to, to funny, funny, funny. And to me, what I like to do is I like to blend them both. Yeah. You know, so it's all it's all a little bit more even. Well, you have. I mean, you blend them both. And uh, another component of the show, which I haven't personally like, is this next component. Take a look. Now give it up for the LA Regional Hip Hop Dance Champions. Yo, Truman is kicking our ass. Where the hell are Gina and our captain? Who knows? Girl, put that blush down, you look like a pinata. Hater. <laughs> this is the look that got me Miss Teen Mila. <laughs> Show up, we're up next. I'm sorry. Hey, there's no boys lot backstage. I look after speech. I said get out. What's up, bitches? You ready? You okay? Just do some makeup. Don't make me look like a chola. Let's go make it 
Okay, well, first you gotta change. Ready? Hurry up. So you guys gotta go. dance competitions with like uh, strolling and stepping so I had a little bit of experience there. You actually stepped? Yeah, so. <laughs> that's, uh, stepping is very popular. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can't remember it again. She can't step in heels. Thank you. We, we don't want a stepping action happening here. You know. the letters, you know. <laughs> and, and Carlos, you, you directed that, so I mean, you, you love directing dance uh, numbers? Cause oh, I direct everything. Yeah. So, no problem. I, we, I have to say we had an amazing choreographer. Yeah. Her, uh, her name is Reina Hidalgo. Oh. She's just a great choreographer. So great cinematography too. So really yeah, Kira Kelly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just just a lot of great talented people. Has there been a thought behind the show that you would add a lot of dance to the show, or has it just came naturally from it? Well, I think who really loves the dancing. Oh, really? Oh, they yeah. love the dancing, yeah. They love the dancing and they love the scenes like this. We have tons of dance numbers in the show, so they're big fans of that. And I love it too. I just, I'm just very protective of like, making sure that it's not just dancing for the sake of dancing, that it, that it's related to the story, that there's yeah. no story behind it. The, the dance. So it's not a, an obligatory, obligatory dance number. Yeah. You're talking all of a sudden, dance number. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's well done in it. And I, I love how she's in it. Um, I'm singing. Have you guys been done a singing yet? Uh, no, I think that's why I'm going to draw the line. <laughs> you draw the line? <laughs> Yeah, I think the so I think might explode because we'll have we'll have one one element too many at that point. Yeah, I think that will <laughs> diabetes. That, I think that's gonna happen. Diabetes, come on. Such a point. I I could be eating ice cream and crying to myself when you tell that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so now now we're going into this the next season. The season, season three. three. Yeah, season three. So, Uh, that's great. So well, congratulations. Thank you. I have to say it's the first show that premiered, I think, on July 9th, and based on how many people view the show in just 24 hours, we got a fair season pick up the following day. Just never happened yeah. before. Yeah. So, 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 season two, we definitely want season three. Well, it's also great because when people are, are now we're using mobile phones and all these different things to really watch our entertainment, what we're, we're seeing, it's the best way to know what your audience is doing. And, and that's changed because it used to be the Nielsen would come out with, after you do a show, the ratings would come out and all that. There always, even with Hollywood, was a certain distrust, a little bit of Nielsen. Mm -hmm. And yeah. there was a, well, the study said there was a thousand boxes, but I think only 995 were white people. <laughs> yeah. So they couldn't tell what African Americans were really watching or what Latinos were really watching because the boxes were in certain neighborhoods. It, it, I actually went to East LA where there was a box. I did find a guy with the box. So you had 500 people watching. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I told them, I, I knew the guy, and I said, look, I'll, I'll come by and have a pizza with you. I'm just curious, he has the box, and I want to see how it worked. I said, could we watch one of my shows right now? <laughs> so he watched it, and it was a tick on, on the Nielsen came up. I was like, wow, it really worked. But I'm thinking there's one box in one family and, and that's how we're judging it. But with this, you're able to know how, how long an audience stays, when they, when they click off, all those certain things. So it, it is so immediate. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Now, the season three is going to have some big cliffhangers. Some real Always, ones. yeah, we love them. So uh, this is another topic that 
this this uh, this this show has all the adult topics you could ever imagine, and uh, this is an actual. Take a look at this clip. You know that guy's gonna get beat up in some bar in East Los Angeles. He'll be in East Los Angeles having a drink. He's gonna knock him out. I saw that guy. He like abused his daughter. So uh, that's a role that's gonna be hard to do. So not only do you deal with incest in that state, you're also dealing with someone cutting themselves. Yeah, that's that's a part of that too. Mm -hmm. That's that's her acting out the the, the incest. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you've got you got a double hitter right there. That one scene. Yeah, and I have to say, when I was when we were writing the show, I was like, how the hell are we ever gonna find an actress who can capture all this and the and the humanity and the humor and the ghetto fabulousness and and the drama and the comedy and then I have to say, Vanessa Vasquez nailed that part. Oh. Yeah. Like, and, and I just, I'm, I'm so in love with that character, I, yeah. I, I find her, um, I mean I relate to all my characters, but I just so relate to, to so much to the character, and always she's, um, she's misunderstood, mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I don't know how many actresses I, we, we audition for that part, a lot of them, just about every young Latina in, 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 in LA who's an actress read for that part, <laughs> it was really a difficult part to cast, but when she walked in that was it. So, 53 million Latinos, and you people. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's education, huh? Okay, so education is education. very important. Very important. So, you deal with a lot of this. I mean, it's funny, she, she uh, Vanessa was auditioning for CBS, and she sent me a, a, a clip, and I was like, it's for a comedy show. So I'm like, I don't know if this is going to really work for comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I still sent it in, and, and you got a call back, so. She, yeah. yeah. Let me just call me scenes in the show. Yeah, that's yeah. not funny. It's still showing. Well, that's the good thing. It, it, there's a balance. I mean, I was, I was almost you know, scared to put that to the very last part of our clips was, was you know, leaving on the dramatic note in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But you can't watch a show without laughing. And, and the dialogue is so realistic, and, and the comedy part, and I think that captures the Latino experience and the human experience as well, because it's, it's a very human show. Um, you know, incest, that was a that was a tough decision to come up and put that in the show. What was the thought behind that? You know, really, we were talking about in season two, and, some, and we were talking about things that we were going to do, and somebody mentioned incest, and somebody said in the room, oh, you can't do that. I'm saying, oh, really, well, we're doing it. I remember that. I was like, don't tell me how to do something because I'm, that's the way I've always been. It's like somebody says, no, you can't, oh, yeah, I don't want to watch. Well, so it was like, and, and it, there's a lot, I mean, this, that's something that happens in, my, happened in my family. And the more I talk about it, the more people come to me and say, hey, you know, well, uh, me or my sister, you know, it's like, it's something that's so there. Yeah. And I, I think it's important to, to bring it up, you know, for, to, to, to put a face to it. Yes. You exactly. know? Well, you know? It's, it's, it, it does put a face to it. It puts a very human face to it. But it allows people to really talk about their lives and talk about issues. And I think that's, that's the cure to all diseases and all the ignorance of best, is allowing people to dialogue, just like what's happening tonight. Allowing us, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow some questions to come from the audience, because I want this to feel like it is our living room, these are our guests, and let's ask some questions. So, um, would you mind taking the questions from the audience? Sure. Okay. All right. So, we got the... Uh, there's the audience now, now we see you in the Oh, there's a, there's a, there's a hand went up right away. From, uh, there's so many people. I know, I know. Yeah. What if you <laughs> leave the other one? See this. I have a little curiosity. Uh, in the scene with the grandparents, they, you only used a couple of Spanish phrases. And in a scene like that, with the grandparents, I would have expected more Spanish, with maybe some subtitles with people that don't understand it. Do you use very much Spanish at all with the old people, people like me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you talking to me? <laughs> I think, I think it's on Carlos? Oh. So the question is, she saw the, she, you saw the scene and you wonder, are the, are the abuelos talking more in Spanish in your, in your show? Uh, they speak a little bit more Spanish, but you know, there's a lot of, um, uh, I know there's a lot of Mexican Americans who were born in this country or came here when they were really young. Yeah. And um, and I think that that uh, you see a lot of that on television. The grandparents don't speak English, and I'm like, no, you know, these these people, you know, she she worked in uh, City Hall for years, and the grandfather has his own grocery store, and he's gonna talk to the Coke guy 
and to people, and he's got to make make his orders. Yeah. So, so it's, it's the decision at the beginning when we were starting the show. They asked, they were, one of the decisions was, do we do it in English or do we do it in Spanish? Spanish. And a decision I made is, no, I'm going to do it in English mm -hmm. because of that. We're in the United States, and I think we're going to reach more of an audience. You know, we can re we can we can make a, a well, I mean, statement. Well, Univision, a, few, a lot of programs and networks are going into English. Uh, a lot of times what, what people are told is the only way you can reach Latinos is in Spanish. The truth is we have more Latinos that are born in this country than actually immigrated the country. So even myself, my grandparents spoke English. Uh, Vanessa, yours, English? They speak English? Um, no. No, you speak English. Puro español. zapatos. Yeah, it all depends. And I think that's, that's, that's even a... a, a a better idea to show all the sides of it. Sometimes it matters, sometimes not. That's great. Next question. Yes. Uh, Carlos, you had mentioned that in the upcoming season you're going to touch on some of the issues that were raised uh, by the situation in Ferguson, police brutality and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so and so, I was wondering what you think the best ways to address the issues of the <laughs> <laughs> Even with a microphone, you sound hard yeah, to hear. I'm projecting. So, my question is what do you think the best are, are some of the best ways to address the issues of today and expose them to the younger generations? Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, can you please repeat the question? Okay, really the, question is, the question is this is, Tell you, you deal with a lot of different issues. Uh, Ferguson was a, is a big issue. The, how do you deal? with the issues of today? Is that your question? Or how do, you, how do you address them and how do you expose them to how do you, the younger generation? How do you address them and how do you expose the issues of today? Yeah. Well, um, we're doing something similar to what's going on right now, but it's how to create it, how to make it very part of the story, and also do what you least expect it. We're actually thinking of doing it in the middle of a dance competition, and a couple of the kids are running, are, are running late for, for a dance competition, and they're, they're boy dancers, and they got their hoodies on, and there's three of them running on the street, and the police talk to them because they, they think they're gangs. And when they talk back to them, because it's like, we're not gangs, we're dancers, they beat the shit out of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's maybe one way to approach it. You know, which is, it comes out of nowhere. It's not like, because I think when you start putting, pointing the finger at it too much, then you start getting preachy. And, I, and that's the one thing that we fight a lot as writers, is not to come across as real, as, as, as uh, preaching, preaching to the audience. Yeah, you're not gonna, I mean, you're not gonna say something to them and all of a sudden turn the camera and go, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think you know you know that that's not the way we would do it. But but I have to say for, for writers, and I have to say that that everything comes from the writers. Everything comes from from the writers' room. And um, for writers, it's always about challenging ourselves to come up with something and do it a little different than what we've seen before. Well, plus also it, it's a reflection of life. I don't think anyone wakes up and goes, "I'm just going to be police brutality this morning." Yeah. I mean, it all every disaster normally comes out of a surprise. Yep. And I think when people talk and they reveal themselves, no one necessarily wanted to tell this story. And sometimes actors play the end of the scene instead of how it really comes about. Another question. One back here. Okay. My, my question is for uh, Mr. Portugal. Um, I know this, this, this is East uh, Los High is doing very well right now for you. Uh, are you working on anything else other than this? Cause, uh, Quite a few people that are in your position do have other projects going on. You know, I've been offered other things, but um, it, this is such a part of my life right now. And the things that I, what, what I do is I, I'm, I'm the head writer, but then I become the producer, and then I'm, I'm the director, and then I'm the editor. So I'm, it's like a whole year, and I really can walk, I, I really don't want to take anything else on right now. Because I also have a life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very important to have a, I have a partner and I have a very needy little dog who needs to go walk a lot. And um, I love my dog and I have to take care of him and, and you know, I have friends and everything. And that's something I also learned is in, in this business, it's a real tough business. And when I was younger, I would give 100% of myself and I would work seven days a week, 24 hours a day on a project. And I would work and work and work and work. And sometimes I succeeded, but sometimes I would get to work on Mondays and find out that the show I've been working on and giving everything of myself to was canceled. Mm -hmm. And talk about going into a depression. Yeah. Because then you have nothing. <laughs> you don't have jobs and you don't have friends. Yeah, you know, yeah. and I've learned as, as, as I get older that it, I have to balance that a little bit. It is a very smart thing. I think the balance, because your outside world helps you in your art world. Yeah. You can't. You know, living. I worry about 
writers are just in, in an office 24-7. In fact, Johnny Carson, the famous story, used to send his writers out at 4. He'd say, go. And I knew a writer on the show. Before four in the morning or Friday? No, four in the afternoon. Oh, four in the afternoon. Yeah. There's some, there some writers who will keep their, their yeah. writing stuff till four in the morning. No, he would say, he would say it's four o'clock, go, and it, it's a wine. You gotta go to happy hour. And someone asked him, why are you sending your writers to happy? He goes, I can't trust a writer who's not going to a bar and laughing with a bunch of guys and hanging out, because he's gonna come back with those stories. Yeah. And, and I think you need to have that life. I want to say when, when I was working for Tyler Perry in Atlanta, I wrote a script for one of his shows and he was the director and he walked in, I wasn't in, I wasn't in the set but I was in the writer's room and he walked in and he looked at my script and he started blocking the show and he looked and he goes, this is bullshit. <laughs> Threw it on the floor and everybody goes home and you know he's the king, he's like owns everything yeah. and he sent everybody home. And the word got to the writers who was like, Carlos, your script just got called bullshit by Tyler Perry. And I thought, okay, I'm going back to LA right now, you know? And I remember thinking to myself, so what? I'm going back to LA, and I have my house, and I have my friends, and I can get another job. Yeah. And I love living with that sense of freedom in my life, that I can, that I, that tomorrow I can lose this, but there's something else. Mm -hmm. And that's so important in this business, because if not, you can drive yourself crazy. Long story short, I didn't get fired, because mm -hmm. I found out he does it to all the writers. Because <laughs> he's a writer himself, and he's one of those writers who doesn't like anybody else's work on himself. So he's very, like, if he didn't like it, and it's like, everybody's like, welcome to the club, Carlos, that means you're in now. But you know, there was that moment of like, wow, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm done here. But I didn't feel scared or freaked out or anything, because like, you know what? So, I come out of here and I go back to LA and I get another job. And that goes on. So that's, that's it's really important for anybody who's thinking of getting in this business to find that balance. Yeah, you have to find the balance because it, you have, almost have to have a certain faith about it. That, that I was, that someone told me once and said that God has something better. Yeah. And God has something better. God has and other plans. He yeah. has other plans. And I think it's such a beautiful way of approaching art in your life to go, you know something that doesn't work out now, there's something better. And, and I think you're doing it. Uh, and one more question? One more. Yes. Right here. Go ahead. The question is for Carlos. What kind of advice could you give to any aspiring Latino actress or screenwriter or filmmaker? They asked Betty Davis that question, what advice do you give actors coming to Hollywood? She said, take Fountain. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a street. Anyway, it's a joke. Take Fountain is a street. Of <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I will tell you what it is, and that is to diversify. To learn a little bit about everything, because like when I came to uh, when I moved to LA 20 years ago, um, I started as a promo writer, then I became a creative director, then I was a writer, then I was a producer, then I was an editor, and then I was a director. You know, and, and what I'm getting at is that I've been working steadily for 20 years. I produce reality shows, I've produced sitcoms, I've written sitcoms, I've done independent gay movies, I, I've done teen movies, I've done musicals. So what I'm saying is that I can always get work. And I think it's, it's what happens with a lot of, 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 of us when we're starting out is we think, because I really thought when I started out, I said, I'm just going to be a screenwriter and all I'm going to do is write $20 million budget movies. Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't work for a long time because that attitude didn't get me anywhere. You know? So by learning to do a little bit of everything, I'm always employed. Well, I think, I think it's also... So that's my advice. That's my advice. It, it's good advice because you're trying to knock away the nose in Hollywood. The song goes, oh, have you ever done this? Uh, it happened to me when I first started my career. I was up for a show, a soap opera, and they said, have you ever done a soap opera before? No. Oh, then you wouldn't know how to handle the three ca oh, the cameras. And it's going to be really difficult for you. So no. And then the next season I came back, yeah, I've done a soap opera. Oh, great, you're in it. So you're knocking away the nose. But I think what you're saying is continually educate yourself. Always. And a big thing for Latinos, if there isn't a job for you, create one. And I think that's what's been happening. We're the biggest entrepreneurs. When you look at it, we are entrepreneurs. Yeah. Because we, a lot of us don't like working for the man. <laughs> and we like to create our own jobs, and we like to create our own things. And Latinos, you know, we, we have that, you know, we, we're, so, we're so smart and so good at creating that. And I think that goes for everybody here. Vanessa, I'll go down the couch. Vanessa, yes, um, well, what would you say would be the best advice to give a Latino? Uh, I think the same thing is 
to educate yourself. Um, like I said earlier, when I was in college too, I just I wanted to quit college <laughs> and just become a movie star. <laughs> but it, it really is really important because um, I remember when I was in at the university, there was a huge casting director that went into Houston, and I just went um, to kind of you know see what was up with her, what was going on, you know, see if I if they liked me, you know, if I would fit in. And she said, "Are you in school right now?" I said, "Yes." And she said, "Stay in school." She said, "You don't, you have no idea how many dumb actors there are in Hollywood." She said, "And it's not flying anymore." She said, "We want smart people because the smarter that you that you are, the more genius you can be in your craft and bring things to the table." Stay in school and be cool. <laughs> But um, no, I, I honestly just keep your training going. I have been training ever since I got here. I never missed a year or a month, you know? Um, and never give up. <laughs> you have to be consistent. You have to, you know, work hard and, and just don't lose faith because, you know, something's got to give. And, and I think you came from a small town, right? Or, or in Northern California, it was... Hayward. Hayward, Hayward. California. Hayward. Yeah, you came yeah. from Hayward. Vanessa, uh -huh. what city did you come from? I come. I came from a little town, too, in, well, right next to Houston, Richmond. Yeah, and... Nobody uh, knows about it. I, know, <laughs> I came from a little town, too, and a lot of people don't realize when you go to Hollywood, people are just, oh, Hollywood, oh my God, Hollywood. Everyone in Hollywood came from a little town. That's really true. So, you could come from Oxnard. And you just as well. You got your family living close to you. Yeah. 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 No, it's really important. Really so, so never make that an excuse. And I love the thing about entrepreneurial. Make your job. If, if, if there isn't one, create one. And you guys are doing it. Now, I will say this about this program. This September 27th, on this stage, there's going to be a great show, um, NWC, which is going to be hilarious. It's funny. And please come, because this whole Performing Arts Center is for all of you. And, the, and please give a round of applause to our program. September 27th, we'll be back. Thank you so much. We'll be hanging out. I'm sure we'll be at TJ Fighters. Be a jazzy old man.